Hello everyone and welcome to Moonride where we're chanting the man on the moon. Difficult times, that's really what we're facing right now and it's going to go on for a little bit longer. So uh, before you contemplate that, get worried about that, just take a moment right now and think about all of those people, doctors, nurses, social, social workers, you know, whoever, there's grocery store workers, all of those people right now who are risking uh, their lives, their health, their family's health to keep others safe. These people may have the simplest jobs. They may not necessarily be the well, best paid or the highest educated, but they're doing something for our culture and our society at great risk to themselves. So please take a moment and just bring in love and say thank you. Also, maybe you can just imagine, you know, light from outer space coming and reflecting through you to all of those people to help keep them safe, physically and psychologically. There's another important component of this, and that is to thank yourself. You're going through a very difficult time. You've made extremely difficult decisions. You're doing that every day, 10, 20 times a day. You're deciding whether um, it's safe for others and for myself to go out and buy some milk. Right? This is not an easy thing. And insofar as you've done that, understand you're doing real work here. You are doing work here on your spirit. You're confirming that uh, you, as human, uh, can take care of yourself and your society just because, not because somebody makes you do it. So um, think about this for a moment. Think about the things, just the simple things that you are doing in this crisis that make you a human who is acting in love, right? So also bring that light to yourself. Thank yourself and uh, bring in some love for yourself and some protection. I always picture this as a circle of light way out in outer space, and I just bring it down. I just pull it on down around myself. There are videos here um, where you can watch that be done. Some people see the right as red. It's really interesting to me that other people see it with different colors, right? So I notice women tend to have uh, much more pink or purple colors. So check it out. See what your color's like. <laughs> It'd be fun to do, uh, if nothing else. A couple of people have uh, asked me some questions today, and one is really interesting. It comes from Teresa. And uh, Teresa's wondering if Pence or Trump will get the virus, right? And I sort of have an indication of what might happen already. We'll try it again. But um, also, I just want to know the fate of those two people, right? So let's start with Pence. Okay, I'm seeing it again. I see Pence. He's standing. There's a series of graves, right? There's one grave in particular, and he's standing next to that grave. And it's just, it's a new grave. It's got flowers on it. Um, I don't know whether it's, it's actually empty. So that person hasn't uh, fallen yet, but it's an empty space. And he's standing next to it, almost like paying his respects. And he's standing there alone. So um, he's from a far away, comes closer. There he is at the grave site. And he's like sort of gesturing to the grave, All right? So um, something. This will. Uh, I don't necessarily. I don't think he's going to get it. Uh, if he does, it'll be such a mild case. But somebody nearby him is not going to make it, and it just has a feeling of, you know, he's going to their funeral. He knows that person, right? Hmm. Okay. Anything more about Pence and his future? I get that people um, will really dislike him. Uh, you know, some people don't like him already, but um, he will be a very loathed human being at some point. And again, I've seen this before, but um, it's just like, here he is at the microphone, and people are throwing food at him. They just hate his guts like nobody's business. And winding up being fairly obscure after all of this, he goes back to uh, sort of being unknown. It's interesting because I even see this woman that's his wife and she gives me the impression like even she can't stand him. I don't necessarily think it's really her. It might just be, you know, women in general as well as her. Often these have two meanings, the literal meaning and the figurative meaning. But she just looks like she's fed up with him, like she's kind of got contempt for him. So, um, you know, his fate really is to go home and be loathed, go home to Indiana and be afraid to show his face. Mm-hmm.
and to question his faith, right? Anything else for uh, Pence? He looks, he can look forward to losing his hair. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's look at uh, Trump. And again, I see this image. Hmm. So this person, Teresa, I spoke to is a very intuitive person, and I want to encourage all of you to work on your intuition. Like, she is doing a really good job of this. And um, she was just saying, look, something's going to happen to Trump. I don't know what. And I, uh, I did get this, and I'm getting this now. It's like an airplane lands, and he's going down the stairs, and he trips, and he falls down the stairs. And this is devastating for a couple of reasons. One, because he appears injured, but it's more than that. So the TV cameras are obviously reporting it. He's talking about how Joe Biden isn't going to make it because he's so old and dithering. But this guy can't even walk down a flight of stairs, so it really looks bad for him. But also, there's some reason why he's fallen down the stairs. There's a more serious illness. Um, and I have always said that he is addicted to um, cold medicine. I've always believed that, and um, I've seen some evidence of it as well. So I wonder, is that it? Maybe not. It's got to maybe connected to that. It's almost like it's faded. It's like all of this combination of stress and medication and this and that, all of these things coming at him. Um, are uh, different, um, all of these things are, are causing so much, his psyche is becoming totally overwhelmed. I mean, imagine that he's absolutely terrified of losing, because if he loses this race, he's going to go to jail, and all his kids are going to go to jail. So he's frantic, and he's frantically trying to rewrite the truth in his mind. He's frantic, frantic, and every day it's bad news, bad news, bad news. So uh, he's got that, and he's got an addiction problem, and he's got, he doesn't eat very well, and he's under so much stress, and um, you know, every time he you know, gets angry, he increases his own stress level. It's not like a release. It's just, he just mounts his, his heart to a point where it's having difficulty recovering. And I get that it's a whole complex of all of those things through his body. Like it might be heart-centered or even a stroke or something like that. But it's really about the stress, and part of it is just psychological, right? So um, I've always, I've, I've seen for a while that um, it's the Republicans that push Trump out, not the Democrats. And when they do, there are just serious concerns um, for his health, for his sanity, and for the safety of the nation. So do we get what else about Trump? He's near to death, man, I'm telling you. He is not going to last long. And I wonder, I kind of feel like maybe that's the empty grave that Pence is standing next to. So Spirit, is he going to pass before the election? Oh, no. Is he going to... Is he gonna pass after the election? No, at least not right away. I'm thinking of that time between the election and the actual taking of office of the next president. And I don't think he's going to die at either of those times, but I do think that he's gonna get, uh, something's gonna happen, like he's gonna get some serious, serious psychological or physical problems such that he physically needs to leave before uh, Biden takes office. Is that, and that's not even necessarily the case. There's just going to be not, it's not I, I don't get a perfect timeline here, but it's just serious issues with his medical life come up. Uh, they get um, even worse in the time between um, the election and the, the oath of office. Maybe um, becoming quite bad in December. So is this a psychological? You know, keep keep in mind that um, one thing that 
Trump doesn't have many ways out. So one, you know, imagine that he loses the election and then he's just sticking around. What's he going to do? Um, try to cover up? He can't. Um, it's just going to be waiting, 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 waiting for the other shoe to drop. And um, they don't want to do that. So it's almost like he's creating a diversion. I don't think that it's not, I think it's real, the medical issues, but I also think that he is almost willing them into being so that he can get carried out of there, you know, and, um, you know, have some, you know, psychological problem so that they can't punish him. This is the only way out right now for Trump. And even that is just another delay of problems. That there is a grave there. I do get Trump goes to jail, but it's like very medical. It's like a jail with a hospital and he's mostly in the hospital and, um, really angry and stressed and kind of helpless. And very much abandoned. I get even Fox News will finally abandon him. And I get a victory. I do get victory for Biden. That's fairly easy to predict right now, but um, I do get a big old Biden, um, you know, victory. And I still get Stacey Abrams next to him. I think she's definitely going in there with a strong possibility. Right? All right. Thanks so much for watching.